Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be recommending some desert fantasy books to you. So these are all books that have settings that are in the desert or involve some sort of desert. I personally like that setting in fantasy and I feel like they're kind of hard to come by. So I wanted to give you guys some recommendations. I have some young adult and some adult, so I'll go ahead and put timestamps down below if you're interested in just one or the other. And I also have a one duology that's an adult that I haven't read, but I still wanted to include on this list, as well as one young adult trilogy that I still haven't read that I wanted to include on this list. But before we go ahead and get on into the video, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box for links to all of my social media, my Buddy Read Discord, and my Patreon, where you can be entered into winning book giveaways. I'm going to be starting with my adult books first, and the first is City of Brass, which is book one in the Deva Bod trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. I read this book earlier in the year and did enjoy it quite a bit. I do want to continue on with the series. I own the second book, Kingdom of Copper, but do not own the third book. But in this book, we follow Nari, who lives in modern day Cairo, and one day she accidentally summons a djinn. And this djinn ends up taking her on a journey across this desert and into Devabad or the city of brass which is kind of like a mythological city and she learns that she is important to this city that she has some sort of uh, powers within herself and there's a lot of political and social unrest going on in this city between an oppressed group of people and kind of the ruling class of people this book I really thought was super atmospheric. Our author has such beautiful writing. She uses so much imagery and descriptions to really bring this world al alive. And there's a lot of references to desert mythological creatures such as the djinn, ifrits, things like that, which seem to be common like creatures in desert fantasies. I do want to continue with this series and I've heard a lot of good things about the next two books. The next book is Race the Sands by Sarah Beth Durst. This is a standalone desert fantasy, which is another plus because I feel like standalone fantasies are really hard to come by. But in this world, you are actually reincarnated into different beings or different like creatures, usually animals after you die. And if you were like a horrible person in this life, then you get reincarnated into a keyhawk, which are these type of monsters. And the people that live in the city of Bakar have learned to tame somewhat these monsters and they train people to race them. Think of like horse racing. So we follow a woman named Tamara who ends up getting this keyhawk and learning that this keyhawk is definitely not like others and she ends up uncovering a, a conspiracy with regards to the augurs or the religious uh, sector of the this world as well as this specific key hawk. There's something going on with this specific monster. But this book does take place in a desert setting. There are instances where they take the key hawk out into the desert to train the rider. They hire a young girl who rides this key hawk and then they do their races um, outdoors as well. So it's an interesting concept, very different than what I've ever read before. And it has your desert setting and it's a standalone and it's super easy to read. So another one that I would recommend if you're looking for a fun desert fantasy. The next book is 12 Kings in Sherrick High by Bradley Belier. This book I finished last week and I did a full review on it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But we follow a girl named Seda who lives in a kingdom called Sherrick High in the desert and it is ruled by these 12 ruthless immortal kings. Seda grew up in the poor part of town and she was raised by her mother who when Seda was about 10 years old was murdered by these kings. And Seda was sent to live with like a family friend who runs an apothecary and over time she has learned to survive and make a living by becoming a pit fighter and Seda wants to seek revenge for the against the kings who killed her mother and her mother left all of these clues for Seda to find with regards to how to kill these immortal kings so our main character goes on a revenge quest against these kings and this book had such beautiful writing and the setting was just so immersive I loved it so so much just the way that the author described the desert because our character has to go out into the desert sometimes I just felt like I was there immersed in this world and I really really loved it so the setting is definitely one of my favorite parts of this book 
The next book is Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri, and this is book one in the Books of Amba series, which is only a duology. And I feel like duologies aren't really that common in adult fantasy, so it's kind of nice to find one. And this is a desert fantasy, and I haven't read it yet, but it is one that I was maybe hoping to get to this year. I'm not sure if I'm going to be, be able to get to it. But in this book, we follow a world where there are these nomads that are oppressed by the Empire, and they're trying to hide from the Empire, so they travel all over the place. And they're sought out because there is power in their blood. And our main character is the illegitimate daughter of this prestigious governor and one of these nomads. One day, our main character Mari's powers manifest and she comes to the attention of the Emperor and he immediately seeks her out because he wants to eradicate her. So Mari has to be on the run from the Emperor and she doesn't know why. So while she's on the run she has to uncover the mysteries of herself, her family, her people, etc. So I've heard a lot of good things about this series. It seems like it'd be very quick to get through and it's just another desert fantasy that I want to read. The next books are all young adults, and the first one is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. And I read this book last year, and this one I actually received an arc of, like, let me see, uh, 2019? Yeah, 2019 it came out. And this book at first does not have a desert setting, so we are following a main character named Safira and Safira every day disguises herself as a hunter to go into this forest, this evil dark forest, to kill food and bring it back to her village so that people can eat. But the reason that this dark forest exists is that magic was siphoned away from this world and it used to be a desert. And now that there's no magic, this desert has turned into a forest with a lot of snow. So it's kind of like the opposite setting. But Safira eventually embarks on a quest to obtain this long lost artifact that will bring magic back to the world. And in doing so she has to go to this desert setting and that's where we get the desert environment. So I thought this book was pretty good. It was a debut from our author. In my opinion it was very tropey and it did take a good like 30% of this book for the plot to really really pick up and then it just like took off. And I tried to read the sequel. Unfortunately it just wasn't for me but I did want to include this book because I do think it's worth checking out if you like young adult fantasy and you like uh, desert settings. Next we have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This is book one in her duology and I read this duology a couple of years ago and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid YA fantasy, desert fantasy. But this world is ruled by this young caliph who is murdering brides. So every single night he marries a new girl and then that next morning she is dead. And we follow our main character who willingly marries this caliph so that she can murder him because he killed her best friend. But after the night is done, she's still alive and she survives by telling him stories. The reason that I like this book is that it's one of those situations where you think you know one thing, but the situation is actually completely different, where our main character absolutely abhors this king and she doesn't know the real situation behind his actions and all she wants is to seek revenge, but he has his reasons for doing things and she slowly has to uncover that. And I thought that the romance was really good. The second book was a little bit weaker in my opinion. We get way more desert fantasy setting and development of magic and manifestation of magic in book two. Um, and I felt like the, I want to say climax or like the whole battle scene aspect of the series was a lot less than it could have been. But overall, it's a great desert fantasy YA duology that focuses, in my opinion, way more on the characters and the romance. And another thing I liked about this series is that our main character tells um, the Caliph all of these stories. And I absolutely loved hearing the stories that she was uh, telling him. It was very like fairy tale esque and the last is a trilogy that I picked up at a used bookstore probably years ago at this point, and I still haven't read it, and that is Rebel in the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton, and it includes Rebel in the Sands, Hero at the Fall, and Traitor to the Throne. So I have all of the books, and I really don't know what the like whole plot is about this series, but all I know is it follows a girl named Amani, and Amani was never... In trouble she was never a thief she was not wanted for anything but one day she meets this djinn and something happens with this djinn and now she's a wanted person i've heard good things about this trilogy it is one that i think i could get through fairly quickly and i'm kind of like in the mood for some desert fantasies now so maybe it's a ya series that i can knock out at some point i don't know okay you guys so those are some desert fantasy recommendations let me know in the comments if you have read any of these what you thought of them and if you have any other recommendations that 
that have desert fantasy settings. And I will see you all in another video soon. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.